everyone, and welcome to the Curious Cube. Oh my god, Luke. I'm literally supposed to be the turtle. What are you doing? Fine. You're such a troll. Hmm. Anyway, wow, you guys are flexing all your turtles now? Okay. <laughs> Holden, you're not allowed to leave and get up and, and get your other turtles. Wait, Luke, you're supposed to be the penguin collector. Oh. Anyway, welcome back to another episode of the Curious Cube. Woo! How's everyone doing? Pretty good. Tired. Tired. Sleep, Agree. Sleep. Lots sleep. of work to do. I'm so. <laughs> yeah, felt that. Like it's at the end of the semester, and I'm supposed. Wait, to how are you guys doing like this? You guys are literally seniors. <laughs> I mean, it's still like the end of the year assignments, right? Yeah, you I just skip those. What? No, kidding. Don't do that. Be a good student. I'm in a, a I, student. I have a group project. And like a good portion of the kids in the group have that mindset that you do. But we also have a junior kid in this group. No, oh, just make the junior do everything. <laughs> That's just mean. By the way, if you guys are watching this, hi. <laughs> No, they they were actually playing one of the episodes like while we were working once, and I was like, "Why? Why would you do this to me?" <laughs> Wait, the junior won't know you next year. Like, you'll never see this person again. So, <laughs> I'm like friends with this guy, though. You don't have to be. Oh my! Okay, I should anyway, stop. <laughs> you're so mean, Holden. Oh my gosh. Uh, anyway, um. But yeah, end of the semester is coming up. Um, and do you guys have plans for summer? Uh, I will probably be helping out at MOP or something. Ooh, fun. Yeah. I will. I mean, they haven't, as of the time we're recording this, I haven't really heard anything official about this, but I will like probably be going to MOP and IMO. And I think I will also be going to the IOL, the International Linguistics Olympiad, which is also a very cool thing more people just as a quick plug more people should check out linguistics olympiads you should look up NACLO you know linguistics olympiads are fun especially like if you're a mathy person it's it's sort of like if you like puzzles um if you like puzzles you know maybe you will like NACLO they even have some problems that are about like weird number systems of you know or not weird but like unusual number systems of various languages that you know, it's not just base 10 I've anymore. I've got a couple of linguistics puzzles. They do seem really fun. It's like code breaking, I guess, right? Sort of. Yeah. I, I mean, some linguistic them. knowledge, some linguistic knowledge can help, but sometimes, you know, some you just are, you know, you don't, uh, contrary to perception, you don't actually need to know a bunch of languages for linguistics. Oh, yeah, certainly not. It's about like weird. Like, like how many languages do you know? <laughs> One. <laughs> yeah, see, prime example. <laughs> Uh, also, we had the Girls in Math uh, Award uh, Award um, Girls Certificate the, the, Program? Yeah, the Girls Certificate. Yeah, that thing. The Girls Certificate Program released its oh, award winners and certificate winners. Uh, so for all of the girls who won something, congratulations. That's awesome. Woo! Um, and I believe it's the... Uh, so you could check the MAA website for the full list of winners. And I don't believe individual winners actually get emails. So check with your contest manager if you think you might have won something or just go check the website and control F for your name or something like that. Uh, but anyway, uh, let's hop right into today's episode. We'll be talking about uh, high school research. Uh, we, all of us have more experience with like math research. So we can't really speak on like, say, bio research, but we'll be talking about our experiences getting involved in high school research and how and you know since gone. this is a since this is a math podcast you wouldn't really expect us to talk much about you know bio research or physics research or whatever mm -hmm. other research anyway you know it is a math podcast i did do one like not really math ish podcast but let's, we'll talk about the uh, podcast no po research project 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 yes it is a p word with a short oh, but anyway uh yeah i i did do one a while back uh, a bit ago but uh we, we get, we'll, we'll talk about that later okay so uh high school research and i mean no, like, we're, we're, we're sort of just talking a, a little to some extent we're just sort of talking about research more generally with the caveat that like since we did research and we are like high school age except for a certain turtle you know 
and who was high school age recently, like it happens to be high school research. So yeah, but like, okay, uh, who who should go first? Uh, like, I guess I can so go first. first of all, we should oldest. probably specify that this is like high school research is not super like it's like it's like close to like uh, actually how is it compared to like you know actual res actual research i mean i, I think it is like, like a baby version of actual research is my impression of it like you know yeah. what i mean anyway, hold on go ahead and share your experience yeah, yeah okay so um uh, my first experience and currently only experience with research um was through the Primes USA program, which is basically um, a program where students are paired with mentors through the MIT math department to work on um, an open problem. And then the research takes place over the course of a year. And at the end, hopefully you put something on the archive or publish. Um, and I did this my junior year. And yeah, I did a project um, that really, that was about like constraint satisfaction problems and universal algebra. I'm not sure if that means that much. So how'd but... you hear about like uh, high school research and uh, why'd, you, why'd you choose to do it? Oh, I uh, heard about the program through a friend from MOP. Um, ah. Her name was Serena. Yeah. Hi. <laughs> Hi. <laughs> She meant, um, she might be so then I decided to apply, and for the application process, they, they make you just they make you do these problems, and I guess you like do the problems, and if you are insightful about the way you write things up or like solve things, um, then I think they let you. He, yeah, they will pair you with a mentor. Um, the the uh, application process does require some like quote advanced math it's not it's not terribly advanced it's just like something you would cover probably in the first two years of undergrad like linear algebra calculus group theory ring theory that kind of stuff yeah but these are certainly things that you know would not be permitted on the amcs or something <laughs> yes obviously you know you'll have to step a little bit out of the contest bubble for those yeah. usually when people ask me about uh, my experience with the uh, mit primes program uh, by the way, PRIME stands for, what does it stand for? Program, program and Research. Uh, something math, uh, I don't know. Uh, program for Research in Math, Engineering, and Science. That's probably it. That's, uh, that sounds right. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, usually when people ask me about it, I just like redirect them to my blog post about it because um, my blog post contains more details than I can remember. Yeah. It, is, it, is, it is a well-written blog post. Yeah. Am I allowed to like plug this somewhere? You already kind of are plugging your yeah. blog, right? Okay, this is true, but people don't know how to find it. Also, yeah. Anyway, uh, Luke, you go next. Okay, um, so I have some amount of experience with research. Basically, um, so I guess, so, okay. There was this professor who I had known you know, I still do know, but like I had known him for like a long time. Like he ran, he was the runner. He, you know, directed the math circle at a nearby university, the University of Texas at Arlington. And so I started going to this math circle. I feel like I've probably talked about it on the podcast before, but I started going to the math circle when I was quite young. And so, you know, I knew this professor for a very long time. And so, you know, eventually he suggested that perhaps we should do some sort of research together. And so this, when he, you know, I, it sort of began in like the fall of 2019, I think this happened in. Um, and so when it started out, we were actually having some like meetings together, like in person, because, you know, there was no concern about, you know, why wouldn't you meet in, together in person? And we like, um, like it was some problem in algebra, like involving something about, it, or not not really some problem in, in in some sense we weren't we weren't really sure exactly where it was going to end up like it was like that's sort of what happens with research you don't necessarily know exactly where you're going to end up in this case there was some formula that was in some unpublished manuscript that you know the professor had come had this formula and it was in this unpublished manuscript and like it was like, okay, could we get some better versions of this? Could we extend this? And so like, 
you know, I did a bunch of computations, notebooks, you know, pages and pages of computations, and eventually it's realized, you showed like, me, right? It's just like maybe. Oh, so. the the actual well, but the actual paper has a bunch of computations. But to actually do it, I did a bunch of like special cases to like just compute a bunch of stuff by hand um, until you know, eventually you realize what the pattern is. Um, and I actually didn't prove the pattern right away because I was just like, okay, it's obvious that this pattern should hold. I don't want to bother actually doing the formal check. So I <laughs> so I postponed actually doing the formal like checking that it should work for a long time. Um, you know, and, and, you know, eventually I had to write it up and so, you know, it got written up, but, you know, so we found this formula. And so this, it, the formula led to some other like, it had some connections to some other stuff that this was sort of the benefit of having a, a collaborator because like he understood some connections to some other stuff that I don't really totally know or don't really like maybe I understood it a little at the time and then but didn't understand as well as he did you know something about look oh the Harish Chandra isomorphism and it's like okay I'll take it seems really cool uh you understand how that works you know, it, it's nice to have a it's nice to have a co-author, and and it also led to some other directions of like, um, like we proved some other properties about this certain thing. Um, the the paper is on the archive. It's called Mixed Tensor Products and Capelli Type Determinants. If you want to search it up, um, but uh, and so this we sent it to the archive, um, in like February of twenty twenty one, and eventually it has been accepted. To, you know, to a journal where I think it will presumably be appearing at some point. Um, so that was one thing I did research-wise. Then I had another separate project that was through MIT Primes, the same thing Holden was talking about. So I got matched with a mentor. Um, and uh, like, basically the project was about Breeds. But again, this was another case of, you know, we didn't know from the beginning where it was going to end up. Or maybe we thought we kind of knew, but it did not end up being where that actually ended up. We didn't, you know, for months, I, you know, there was some amount of exploring, mathematical exploring being done and finding out stuff. But, you know, we didn't really arrive at the question that I ended up answering for, you know, for several months after, you know, like, you know, we started in maybe January of 2021 and we didn't really get to the question for, you know, I don't know, maybe even in August or something. And like, you know, I realized, and just, you know, with with some amount of help from him, but it, this was sort of more of a solo project, more more of a mentorship than a collaboration with with some amount of, you know, assistance from him. I, I you know, figured out uh, like, I, you know, sort of a mentorship, but he, you know, gave advice and suggestions or something, but. I, I've, I figured out a proof of this and, you know, it, something about braid, like there are these, uh, okay, I'll, um, I'll, I won't bother explaining it right here, right now, be, uh, because I'll, I'll tell you why in a minute, but, you know, and, and so I, I sent it off, I, I ended up sending some version of the project to this contest called the uh, Science, Regeneron Science Talent Search, which was um, uh, like, it's this contest where like high school seniors can submit their research, you know, solo research, solo research projects and, you know, maybe get a bunch of awards. And I actually did quite well in this. I ended up getting 10th place, which was a $40,000 scholarship. So, you know, they really have very good awards. They, you know, that's um, money. Yeah, you know, cash, cash money. <laughs> uh, you know, not to, not to say, not to disparage math contests, but there aren't really math contests where the winner gets a two hundred fifty thousand dollars scholarship. True. So, and of course, there's there's more to life. There's far more to life than money, but you know, money cash, is nice. Cash money. <laughs> money is nice. Um. And so, yeah, and I met lots of other, you know, there were lots of other cool people to meet because it wasn't, it wasn't just a math research contest. Like it was, my project was up against, you know, all sorts of, you know, biological informatics and, you know, chemistry or physics or various types of engineering, all sorts of, all sorts of neat stuff. Um, 
And also this brings me to the reason why I'm not going to bother explaining my project here is that I think I, like I did a video for them explaining my project, which should be somewhere on the internet. If you look up like, I don't know, Luke Robitaille, science talent search, topological entropy of simple braids, you can Just probably find that video somewhere. It, I had me standing in front of a nice po big poster, it, you know, you could probably so yeah, you can probably find that video somewhere. And so I'll just refer you to that. And you can also find my paper on it's not on the archive yet, but it's on the MIT Primes website if you look up topological entropy of simple braids. Um, so yeah, that's research. And the the science talent search is cool, you know, it's something I think, you know, it's it's definitely a, a neat thing that, you know, I I recommend you know, people should do it. Anyway, Isabella, do you want to talk <laughs> about your projects? Oh, yeah. So, uh, like Luke, I had two experiences with research. Um, so, uh, my first research experience was at the Honor Summer Math Camp, which is held in te at Texas State University. Uh, so, there are a lot of ways you could get involved in research, right? It, like, you could... A lot of some people talk to a professor that they happen to know or cold or there's a, something called cold emailing, which is just emailing out of the blue, like providing your experience and asking a professor, please take me. I want to do research with you. And, you know, sometimes they'll say yes. Sometimes they'll, they'll say no. I haven't had too much experience with either of those, but I definitely know people who have and were successful with that. Uh, but anyway, so. Uh, my first ex research experience was at Honor Summer Math Camp, which uh, uh, is a it's like a it's a math camp uh not too focused on contests but it does offer uh research opportunities for second and third year students uh so i was you mean in that you, you mean like so oh like second and third year of going to the camp yeah, of going to the camp yeah the first year you you spent the year doing like you learning about like number theory and proof writing and stuff but the second and third year uh you talk about uh, you learn uh, like you, you learn some more higher math but you also get to do research uh, and that's like a pretty big selling point of the camp, I think. Um, so I was put into a group with some uh, with some other campers, and uh, every morning we would head over to uh, and meet up with our mentor and work on and like grind out the research for uh, you know a few hours every morning. Uh, pretty hard work, uh, especially since this was actually not math research, despite it being a math camp. It was like kind of related. To, it was actually a comp site. Of research project uh, that was like kind of related to math. I am not good at comp sci. I am super bad at coding. So my role was, was there, most. Yeah. Was there actual coding involved? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Uh, so uh, the project was um, 3D uh, surface reconstruction, which is you take a bunch of points and then you try to construct them into like a 3D surface uh, using some sort of algorithm. And our project was trying to make that surface like as smooth as possible rather than like jagged or uh and we wanted to make it noise resistant uh that's like a short version of it so uh we did that project uh, i mostly focused on like the more algorithmic or like like the detail part of this stuff and left the coding to the actually com computer inclined people in my group um so that was our project uh, after the camp was over, you know, my my motivation went down a lot, but uh, eventually the paper was completed uh, at around in around October camp and at our, like August, and we sent it off to a conference. Uh, we sent it off to I the IEEE conference. Uh, what was it? CCWC. It stands for like uh, something conference of like computing and yeah, yeah. It's like a, it's like a comp sci. Uh, conference and they accepted it and they um, uh, they invited us to present our research at the conference which is in Las Vegas so I had a fun uh, January spent in Las Vegas with my research partners um, we presented our research we attended the rest of the conference and understood like nothing uh, I even took like a selfie with like some like actual professor who was like presenting fancy stuff there uh, and then like is I this don't. January of which year? Uh, January 2020. So right before COVID happened and everything went to crap. Uh, but yeah, I got to. Uh, I it, it was interesting because like 
I remember specifically there was like a night where one of my research partners was just like sitting down on a bench like playing video games on my computer while I was actually like trying to network <laughs> uh so we were also like probably the only high schoolers at that conference which was very intimidating but we won some awards and it was all it was very fun uh so my second research uh experience was not at MIT primes um I did not attend that but uh it was at the research science institute or RSI uh, I was accepted in 2021 um, and it was on, it was online, but it was still a really great experience. And if any of my RSI pals are watching this right now, hello, you guys are awesome. Hi. Uh, basically, uh, in, at RSI, as opposed to HSMC, uh, all of your projects are solo projects. You get paired up with a mentor, kind of similar to Primes USA, only instead of doing your research out over a whole year, you know, entirely um they're like communication like that. You just, uh, you put, you super concentrate a lot of work in like th those summer weeks. Oh, uh, and just a quick clarification. Primes USA, do, like Holden and I, I guess both happen to have solo projects, but some Primes of those USA, are, yeah, yeah, some Primes USA projects are like group projects. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so uh, but for RSI, mo there, I, there are probably, I think there was like only one group project. And even with that one group project, like everyone had separate presentations. Um, so yeah, I won't say too much about RSI because for any perspective, for any kids who are like about to attend, like uh, you will experience it all soon. Um, and RSI and, is a camp for like rising seniors. Like yeah, it's right. It's uh, for rising seniors. Grade. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so I applied in uh, the spring of my junior year. Uh, it is quite selective. The uh, the application is giant. Like it is larger than pretty much all college apps. There are a lot of essays, and their essays are all very long. Uh, so I so you really have to like put a lot of work into the applications like I think I put I probably put more effort into that than my than my MIT application uh but yeah uh it ended up paying off uh since I got it and uh the experience itself was great um and yeah uh what was my, your project about specifically uh, oh yeah, yeah I, I should probably talk about that so my project was um Okay, explaining it is going to be hard. Uh, you have like, uh, it was about Steiner solutions and graph uh, and um, graph theoretic properties of those. Uh, and that would, and the thing with math research is that it's very hard to explain in layman's terms without, uh, uh, like, it's very I easy think you would do it with a diagram. Yeah, it's easy. It, I could probably do it with a diagram, but I have no diagram at the moment. So, uh, yeah. Uh, but, yeah. Uh, so that was what my project was about. It was uh, pretty heavy in graph theory, which I hadn't had too much experience with prior. Like, obviously, I'd done a little bit of it with contests, but uh, not... I, I hadn't had too much experience with that. And my mentor, uh, I received a lot of help and guidance from the MIT math department. And my actual mentor was a graduate student uh, from MIT. Uh, and yeah, I don't believe my project actually really amounted to much. Like I wrote a paper and all, and it's uh, floating somewhere on the MIT research website. Uh, but it didn't end up doing anything fancy like Luke's did. Uh, 10th, 10th place STS, nothing like that. Uh, <laughs> uh, this is like a high standard, right? That is that is quite a high bar to get. Uh, uh, that's quite a high bar, though. But I, I still think those are like really worthwhile. Even like, and here's, that's the thing with research. Like a lot of the times it won't really amount to much, but it was still like a worthwhile experience. Oh, I also forgot to mention, I did do another HSMC project in 2020. What does HSMC stand for? Uh, Honor Summer Math Camp. I mentioned it earlier. I did do another project in the summer of 2020. Uh, and it was like a group project. It was about, uh, it was on, was it cryptography? I think. Yeah. Uh, and that and the Colossus Conjecture. Uh, and I can't really say much about that project because I was barely involved. Because at around a few weeks into the camp, I got sucked into MOP. <laughs> Uh, and I had to drop everything and do that. So uh, if my group, so 
to my group mates, I'm, I'm very sorry. I, I hope you still did okay. I have no idea how it ended up though. Uh, but yeah. Uh, so now let's talk about like research in a little bit more of a broad sense now that we've each talked about our experiences with it. Um, so uh, yeah. Are there any like general things about math research that we could? Well, like in terms of like finding a project or in terms mm -hmm. of like actually doing any, it? anything. Um, well, um, you could, like, I mean, obviously there are ways, you know, just like, as, as Isabella said earlier, you know, you can just randomly ask professors or professors you already know, mm -hmm. um, or there are programs. Um, but yeah, I guess. Is it possible you know, to do it solo? I think some people. Probably. I mean. It sounds very hard though. You know, it, it can, it can help to have a mentor to make sure that you're, you know, like like you can do it solo but like you need to be like it can be kind of hard to try to find a reasonable problem and not just be like you know i'm gonna prove the riemann hypothesis like i don't think you're 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 probably not gonna do that when i was nine i thought i could <laughs> you could understand the riemann hypothesis at nine that's pretty good so so there's a documentary that kind of explained it and its correlation to prime numbers but i did not know the actual statement of the riemann hypothesis no <laughs> and something about zeros and something about you know all of the like you know all of them on a line. line. On a line. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so all the like, non-trivial you know. ones. <laughs> well, all the trivial ones also lie on a line, but <laughs> yeah, 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 not the same one. Yeah. Anyway, uh, like so. Well, I guess we should talk about what. It's, so, what is math research really? You uh, like you are sort of trying to prove a new theorem. Yeah, you basically you create your... new theorems about problems uh, about open problems, and that's the thing with uh, math research. Uh, it's there is no set solution for whatever you're doing. You are going into uncharted territory. As such, you can expect it to take a long time. And it's this actually relates to another point I wanted to mention, which is like, even if you're someone who, you know, maybe wasn't like, even if you didn't necessarily do well on the AMCs or if you didn't like the AMCs, like there can definitely like, you know, math research can still be for you. You know, there, there's someone I know did a project that did very well at STS, but he, you know, wasn't a big fan of doing, you know, math contests, so the, doing the speed math contest. You know, you don't, you don't have to be someone who's a big, who's big on, you know, I love to do speed math. I'm going to buzz in fast. I'm going to, you know, answer the 25 AMC 12 problems in 75 minutes. You know, if you like that, great. You know, it can be a, a good way of getting some people involved and it can be fun. And, you know, if you like that, great but if you don't like that math research can still be something that you do. and then you have luke who's good at both i mean there can be some correlation between being good at one and being good at the other but like but you, don't you, yeah. don't count yourself out just because and also like if you're doing research like if there are contests and you're like Oh, these contests. I hate all the geometry problems. Maybe I just won't do them. Like if you're yeah, doing research, do you can them. just like ignore you could just like do a project that has nothing, you know, your project will not have anything to do with geometry, probably. So you can just ignore geometry yeah. or something. Yeah. Well, I think one oh. thing I want to remark is like uh you mentioned research is about proving theorems, but I, I feel like it's more about developing tools. Would you agree? Uh oh, I mean like uh like it's like about somehow finding new stuff in some sense of the like word finding stuff. new ways to prove theorems is the more important thing it's like the tool that kind of matters i mean it, it, it can be if you're trying to find a nice proof of something that previously the proof was kind of ugly in the previous mm -hmm. someone's previous paper you know like yeah, it doesn't, yeah. you don't Actually, have to yeah. end up with a new theorem you know like maybe Maybe your contribution is that you did some explicit examples and found some evidence for a conjecture. Yeah, what part I mean, you of kind of want to prove some theorems, but yeah, what part of my re my graph theory research was finding a new way to construct Hamiltonian versions of uh, the thing that I had because uh, the previous one from the the one that was from the paper that I was mostly going off of that thing it had like a Hamiltonian a way of constructing Hamiltonian graphs but it was like kind of hard to follow and like pretty ugly but mine and but like my method ended up creating like very nice Hamiltonian graphs um so yeah 
So it's like that idea of like developing new ways to do things like, you know, like an efficiency problem. <laughs> and so, you know, like sometimes maybe sometimes maybe research can feel sort of like an Olympiad in this. Like sometimes maybe there is a problem and it's just like you spend long enough on the problem uh, on some specific unsolved problem and maybe you just solve it, you know, but maybe long enough is on the order of months or years instead of a couple of hours. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the tools you use might be you know, bigger than the tools you would use on an Olympiad problem or something. Yeah, but on the yeah. other hand, maybe you don't really know what problem you're going to end up solving. But, you know, or maybe, you know, all sorts of things. Maybe maybe you're trying to prove the conjecture and it turns out the conjecture is somewhat like someone else's conjecture and it turns out the conjecture was false. And, you know, like uh, some of it can be that you're just like, you don't really know what you're looking for and you're just doing a bunch of computations maybe with a computer to try to find some examples that will help you find I don't know, interesting patterns. Um, or some of it can, you know, be looking at old papers can, can be part of the process to like understand what they did and do it differently or do it better or just cite their theorem and understand what was going on and use what they did to help you. Yeah. And that's research is... <laughs> so, and I, also I, this I is, these are all sorts of like, these are things that having a mentor can be help. You know, a mentor can tell you which papers are good to look at and you know, what sorts have of things. Yeah. Uh, uh, the thing with math research is, uh, I'm not speaking for everything, but math research, or at least like pure math, uh, like pure math research, is uh, usually very obscure. Like I would wager that a lot of people do not know what Steiner solutions are, nor do they know what topological braids are. Actually, Topolo I could be wrong. Topological entropy of simple braids. Um. And like my topological <laughs> braids are another notion, right? Or am I missing? Okay, okay, I'm sorry. I don't, I don't know. The, I, I, I don't know the full name, but yeah. But yeah, like uh, pure math it, research. Sometimes, you know, it might not have a lot of applications yeah. to real life, which makes me feel bad yeah. sometimes because I see like the bio people doing like, oh, I'm doing cancer research. Oh, I'm doing research on Alzheimer's, and I'm like, I'm doing pizza slices. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, this is also something that more seriously that I do wonder about like do I really want to spend my whole life doing yeah, this research when that I could be using my math you. for you know I don't know to help people with cancer like, or I like, yeah. so I like these are, pizza slices it's just that I want to you know I, I want to do you know, something that people actually use I, I don't know but maybe not academia you know and so the, these are questions we don't necessarily know exactly what we're going to do yet we're but young. if you want to do math research all the power to you it, it, it does sound very fun you know doing cool problems <laughs> Anyway, um, maybe this episode is pretty long already. Yeah. So. <laughs> uh, probably like a yeah. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, and go out there and go do some research. You know, check out some cool open. At least look into some open problems. Yeah. And you know, yeah, you know we'll all, all you sorts for, of stuff. We'll so see yeah, you keep, for the next please, episode. And please, like, keep sending in questions. Yeah. We want, we we, want your questions. We need more questions. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Um, and thanks for watching, and mm -hmm. see you in two weeks. Yeah. Bye. 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 Bye.